Hey guys, it's Scott. I'm in my garage. This is going to be a project that's kind of dirty. Um, it's also a project where I do have a table in front of me now, but most of my work is going to be on the uh, garage uh, floor because these uh, leaves are pretty big and a lot of cement will go on top of them. Now this one I hope to use as a water feature in my pond. You guys will see my pond uh, on my YouTube channel and I'm going to uh, put a tube where this stem is to come out and hopefully gracefully water will just fall into the pond. And so I'll show you how I make that. It'll be more of a curvature. The leaf is a little bit curved as it, as it is. So I'm pretty much giving it some support. And my other elephant ear is another a larger one that I'm gonna make as a stepping stone. I got a few large elephant ears that I'm gonna make um, probably three or four this year, the stepping stones, because I can use them in my garden. But for now, I'll show you how I do one, and then I'll show you how I do another for my pond feature. Now, my mixture for uh, this project will be three parts sand to one part Portland cement. So that's what I use, that's all I use. Um, I do use, as I add the water to it, I will add this, which is a concrete bonding adhesive. Um, they also sell something, a concrete, concrete strengthener, um, but this will work. I wanna make sure that I'm not regretting how I do this. I wanna make sure I start the process right and do it so it's long lasting. I do have some concrete leaves and stepping stones in my garden that have been there well over five, six years, maybe even longer. Um, they've not cracked, and it's because I started off making sure I had some uh, bonding agent, adhesive, and I also, as I go in, after the first layer of um, the mixture goes down on the leaf, I will be using chicken wire. So I have some pre-cut sections of chicken wire um, that if I need to trim, I can trim. I got some snips here, um, but I want this to be basically in the center of this concrete leaf whether it's the fountain leaf or the stepping stone. And at the end, I'm gonna finish it off um, with the fiber tape. Now this is a uh, tape they use when they put that waterproof boarding in your shower, and then they put the tile on top of that uh, boarding. Well, this fiber tape um, helps keep the water out. So as this is sitting on the ground, or as it's in the pond and moisture is getting to it, I'm using things not only to strengthen it, but also to help repel some of the water over time. And so it's better to think about this now than later. So uh, one thing I will say, when you use the Portland cement um, and you mix it and you pour it into this container I have, um, make sure you wear a mask. You don't want this to get into your lungs. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and put the mixture into my container, three parts sand and one part Portland cement. Um, then start getting the water and showing you guys how I use the consistency and what it should look like and we'll get started. So I went ahead and I mixed it up and um, this is pretty much what it looks like. Make sure you guys wear gloves. Um, there's a little bit of dust. I did have my mask on when I was pouring it but uh, I can't talk to the camera and have my mask on. Now I did find some additional, um, it's acrylic fortifier that I had used um, in the past. I have some of that, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off. Uh, but the bonding adhesive is fine as well. And this is, um, this is sort of like cooking. This, we're not following a recipe. So the one thing for those who like to be very precise in everything you do, um, you just need to lighten up a little bit on this because I'm not gonna be measuring. I'm just gonna basically, um, add as I think is appropriate, which it'll work out fine. Like I said, we're using additional um, chicken wire and mesh to help it. And now I'm gonna get some water. Start off kind of slow. And I got this shovel that I had for my daughter many years ago when she helped me in the garden that I think will work well on this. So definitely gonna need a lot more water. You can see the dust rising, which is why wearing a mask is good, but I've got a long shovel.
just check to make sure it's still the consistency that we want. Now I don't use any sort of aggregate, which means um, rocks or stones in here. Um, I don't want my, a lot of people might buy their cement in a pre-mixed bag. I understand why people do that, it's easier. You buy a bag of Portland cement if you have lots of leaves like I do. In the long run, the sand, Portland cement will last you a long time. And I would recommend you guys just do it, but make sure you put your Portland cement in a plastic bag once you're done with it and you store it because any sort of moisture in the floor might work its way in to your bag and then you have a bag full of solid. Anyways, let's see what this looks like in a few minutes. All right guys, it's been about five minutes. Still, it's not too runny. It's good consistency. I think this is ready to go. Let's start with our first uh, leaf casting. Um, the next step, now one thing I would suggest if you have a garden kneeler, use it. I got some knee pads that I've had for past projects. Now I took the leaf, I put sand on the bottom of this tarp and plastic. And remember, you're gonna put the leaf upside down. So all this great veining is what's your cast, your concrete mixture, your Portland cement mixture is gonna see. Now, I want this again to be a little water feature. And so if I want this to be lower than up here, you gotta think backwards. So I want this little lip at the end to be high. So that once I do it, it will do exactly what I want it to do. Now I'm leaving the stem on this one. I got a little bit of, um, a little bit of rip on this leaf. So what I'm gonna do is real quickly get another leaf of any sort of plant just to put underneath it. All right, I just ran outside, got a leaf, and I'm just gonna put it, and I'm gonna tear it because I don't want the contour of the leaf to stick up in my molding. So yeah, so when, um, when I have the vein running the same direction as the elephant ear, so this would be good. Let me go back a little bit maybe. Push this back. All right, so I think this is exactly what I want. Like I said, this is not a science. There's some creative license in this entire project, which makes it fun. And I'm just gonna go ahead and use a trowel that I have and get started. I'm gonna start in the center. And that's okay because once again, it's inverted. The leaf has a contour. You just saw the air get pushed out. But as long as this remains elevated so that I have a drip area at the end, it's fine. See how that's holding up pretty nicely? It's kind of cool that this leaf actually has a place for a hose. So I guess some people also use that area to put in some hooks to hang their elephant ears. All right, I'm gonna stop now and put in my chicken wire. And I'm gonna press it into this. Clip some more over here.
And the extra pieces of cement are the, uh, sorry, chicken wire. I'll put there. Turn it around. So this is what I'm just going to do for the center of it. So as you lift it up and you move it around, you're not worried about it giving way. My wife always says I ruin her scissors, so what I'm going to do is just throw a few of these on here without bringing the scissors close to them. And cut some smaller pieces. Once again, you just want Got stuck to my gloves. You don't want to, um, you just want to uh, make sure this is very well supported. And this tape here will help you, especially as I have this hanging over partly into the pond. I don't want it to come apart. And doing this will help support. It's kind of sticky too. Once I finish cutting, I'll go back over it and put everything in the way I want it. I just don't want to ruin these scissors by getting cement on them. I'll never hear the end of it. She's really good at it. I've gone through a number of pairs she has without much complaint, except please think about it next time. My goodness, this stuff is sticky. I think I'll do one more piece. All right, the scissors are secure. I'm gonna start putting this down. Three days before I even try to mess with it because I don't want to regret not being patient enough. I'm going to put a piece of plastic over it. Drape, not really. And I want it, I'll use that as a little tent for the piece of plastic. And So basically, I want it to dry slowly, and so and it's not really, it's draped loosely. So yeah, a little messy, but you know, we're old clothes, I've got knee pads, and it wasn't too bad some rip gloves, but I got one more to do. I'm gonna do my flat leaf. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it because basically, like I said, do what we just did, don't use sand. And you'll have a flat leaf, a walking stone, stepping stone. And so we'll see in a couple of days, we'll take the leaves apart. I'll tell you how, I'll show you how I paint mine and preserve it. And we'll go from there. Yes. Let's go. Hey guys, it's uh, been a couple days later. It's been actually four days since I did these castings. Last time I uh, was here, I did the one for the fountain and then I did these two stepping stones. So what I'm gonna do now is turn over um, the one for the fountain and probably one for the stepping stone to see how it is. Uh, remember we kept this uh, branch um, stem, I should say, here in the center. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I went to a big box store and I got this attachment. And so basically it's a riser, a small one, and then a connector for the hose. 
uh, for the pump in my pond. And I, they screw together very easily. I think I might have cost a buck for this, two pieces together. And so I'm just going to show or explain this part to you. So when I take this stem out, it won't be quite as big as what I need. I want to go into the leaf up to this area here. So I'll probably take a drill and drill around and I'll insert this into the, the leaf. I'm going to take my hand, I'm going to go where the sand was to help support the leaf and we'll see how it turns out. And so, So it started this coloring. There's an area beyond the leaf that I can go ahead and take my Dremel to uh, get rid of that area so that it's nice and uniform. Some of this comes up very easily with your hands. But let's go ahead and see how easy the leaf comes off. Not bad at all. And if you have a brush of some type, you can do it to uh, get it off. If you have a uh, screwdriver, or if you have like one of these little lobster claw picks when you eat lobster, you can use to try to get some of the, the leaf done. And so I'm gonna finish up doing this. I'm going to get rid of some of the edging around here, make it cleaned up a bit. I'm going to paint it. I've got a um, the paint I'm going to use is called uh, a Tidal Teal, a little bit more, of course, just blue. And then once it dries, I'm going to go over it with a uh, black wash so that it goes and picks up the veining and the leaf a little bit better. It's, it's not meant to be perfect. Each elephant ear is different. The way they come out will be different. Uh, but this would be a long lasting piece for your garden. So let me go ahead and finish up um, what I'm doing with the, with the leaves, taking them off, start some painting and show you what I'm doing. So um, one last thing I want to show you, I have these nippers. These are things that you often see when people are laying tile or breaking tile to go in certain places that are irregular. And so I have these from many years ago. And so I could use my Dremel to go along the perimeter of my leaf. But I'm going to start off by maybe doing some uh, nipping to make it easier. So I wanted to show you guys how I do that. So basically just go up to the area, the end of the leaf. And there is, um, it's kind of sharp here. And just nip it. And it makes a pretty good cut. And you can go ahead and do the perimeter of your leaf. things off and so you can go all the ways around to take care of this and it might go faster so I wanted to show this to you guys I think once the leaf is going on the pump will come up through here the hose will come down I remember we made this area lower so as it's I'll just show you quickly so as it's up a little bit next to the pond water comes out it'll follow this, follow this big vein but there's enough pooling to take place for the birds to drink and just drop off the end. So I'm gonna nip away for a while and let this dry and paint it later on. So we'll talk to you later on. Nip away. All right guys, well, I've done a lot of the nipping. I've used a Dremel to do the edges. So let me show you what I've done, what it looks like. Um, the leaf is looking good. I like the, the ripples. I like the waves. Uh, so I put the riser in there and I silicone the top and the back. And so what I'm going to do now, I use mineral spirits and I cleaned it all up. Um, I think it looks good. I got some paint, uh, cement paint that I ended up buying from a big box store a couple of days ago. Um, but I really like the way that the leaf, the, the, the ridges, and it should flow when it's sitting up. And this is kind of heavy but it, when it's sitting up, it should flow really nice. So this is gonna be a two-step painting process. 
And so the first part is just putting the um, base coat down. I used a uh, kind of a teal color, which I don't mind because the second coat will be black that I'll put on top of it and it'll um, make the color not as bright. And so I'm gonna do this on this leaf. Um, I'm gonna go partly under the leaf as well so that since this is for the fountain, the water, you don't see the cement. And as the water and the birds come and splash, uh, it won't create a problem. So I'm gonna do this for this leaf and then over here is a stepping stone uh, that I cleaned up as well. Used some uh, mineral spirits. I scrubbed out some of the chlorophyll that had stuck. Um, and it's pretty flat, this thing is pretty heavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint both of these and I'll show you what I do in my second coat. All right guys, um, I finished the first coating. Just wanna remind you that I used a, a porch floor and patio paint. It's a latex, it's meant to be outside and you can get it colored whatever you want. I did the teal, it's not called strict teal, I think it's water teal or something like that, pond teal. Um, we'll let this, let this dry for about uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. We'll come back and we'll do the uh, second coat, the final coat, it'll darken it, give it some more contours, but it's already looking kind of cool. Um, I like the way it turned out. I especially like the way this fountain, you can already see some natural pooling uh, movement with the way the leaves folded as I put the cement on. This would be enough of a little basin for birds to drink from as the water comes up. It'll be slanted and so it'll just follow the contour of the leaf and drop out. So kind of excited to see how it goes and we'll be back for the second coat. So the last stage we have our brush cleaned out and we have some black paint. Um, it's good for outdoors. Once this whole process is done there's no more sealant. There's nothing you have to do. This will take care of it even with the water. Uh, I'm not worried about it. I've had elephant ears with the same procedure that have been in the yard for many, many, many years. No issues. So I'm going to go ahead and take the black paint. I mixed it up and I'm going to just go on top of the teal. work kind of quickly. It's a windy day today. And so I'm just going to not worry about covering everything. Try not to splatter someone yourself or the camera person. And so get it in as well as you can. And are we done? No, this isn't the finished product. So now you take a damp rag and you go with the veining. Just try to go the direction of the veins. You just want the black to come into certain areas to help define the veining. You might need to go over with the brush some more. If you miss certain areas, like there's some deep veins that I had missed, when you have the black on, the, on your rag, go on the side where you, just to help with the coloration to blend it in. So we're not really wasting it when we do this. So let's go back here in certain areas that we're seeing. So we're just fine tuning here. We're not as in as big a rush now because we got most of it up in our first pass. And so this not, you know, it's just very, this is the artistic part of it. So there's not really, it's your own preference. Uh, once this is from a distance, 
you're not gonna say, oh wow, I missed that one spot. No, you're not, it just blends in and just do it to the point where you think it's fine. We're not looking for perfection, nothing in the garden that we create is perfect. So don't hold yourself to that kind of standard. And I'll do the edges a little bit more so the teal can um, show through just uh, as it is in certain areas, no biggie. And again, just take your rag, just wipe gently, don't rub it. Just let it flow over the black paint. It'll pick up some, it'll miss other areas, but that's okay. I wanna get right down here in the crevice. Remember when we put it on the sand, um, there's a lot more. What I really like about this piece is the, the waves, the ripples that's there. So as you're painting, you're going to not get every area because of the the ripples so don't worry about it all right well I think I can live with this so just a little bit more And so that's it. That's the, uh, the, we let it dry. It's darkened, it's not, you know, black. You can go lighter on the next one. So let's do the, um, the next one. We'll do a little lighter to see some comparison. Let's play around with it. So. You see the veins just pop out. The black really just helps it pop out. So I'll do more the veins, the large areas, and less so much the smaller areas. Let's see how that looks. Again, you'd be walking on it from above. You're not gonna notice every bit about it. And then we'll just, just go over it. Let's see how that does. Damn brag again. Knock over the paint. You're not rubbing it off, you're just letting it. There's one little recessed hole I want. And here's a different feel to it. So. I'm okay with this. This is not, there's a little line from the leaf that I'll blot out so it's not as obvious. We're not looking for perfect perfection again. Okay, and so I'm happy with this. It's not a it's creative, it's the way I want it. This is darker, I'm okay with that. It's, it'll be near the pond, I want a little bit more uh, protection. That's why I went a little bit heavier with the paint, but I could have done less. The walking stone, I think the teal popping through with the black, a little bit more two-tone, it looks fine. I'll use the um, excess that I have on the sides, or you know, if I can go back on my brush and just do a little bit of dappling just to blend it in so as your this will be buried for the most part you won't see the sides because it's a stepping stone but you know you might at some point might as well use your extra paint on your brush
just to dapple with. So I'm okay with that. How about the camera person? You okay with this? I think it looks great. All right. Well, thanks for my wife Rachel helping <laughs> me out with this. And can't wait to see them where they're going to have their final homes. Yeah, we'll show you uh, where they are uh, to end this up. And you guys, it's been fun, a lot of work, but it's creative. Might as well use your plants uh, to recycle for stepping stones or water features. And we'll just see how it looks. Talk to you later. Quick update. I've got my leaf going. I found a uh, rock that's kind of a similar color to put in the center because my pump is pretty strong. But I think it works out all right. The fish seem to enjoy it and they're interested in it. It looks better than the frog that was there. And there's with my other water feature. So, pleased with that. Let me show you my other stepping stone that I did. It's a nice cool day. And I did record this process that I use. I might post it later on on how I make mine. They're kind of industrial strength. I use a lot of support because they're pretty big and I want them to last. This is a pretty good size leaf. It's a pretty good amount of uh, Portland cement and sand and I like the way it turned out.